Hey all, Josh here today, aka the world's greatest dad. And this bad boy right here is the Yeber Auto Portable Jump Starter and Air Compressor. Today we're going to break this thing down, tell you everything you need to know about it, field test all its functionality, and see if it's something you might need as well. So with that being said, let's get it. So let's go ahead and start from the beginning. When you pick this thing up, it's going to come to you in a box, just like this. Let's get her opened up, see what we're working with. And before we open this thing up, let's go ahead and take a second to take a look at this nice hard shell carry case right here. It comes with a nice little strap, and I do appreciate the fact that they have these carry cases because it's going to keep all your contents in one spot. That way you know it's there when you need it. So let's go ahead and pull everything out. And here's everything that was inside our handy carrying case. Of course, we've got our Yabber Auto Unit itself. On top of that, they're gonna hook you up with two different charging cords. You're gonna notice that one of these is going to be USB-C to USB-C. The other one is USB-A to USB-C. I certainly appreciate that. It's because a lot of wall outlets and things like that are going to be USB-A. Now, on top of that, they also hook you up with this nice DC socket adapter. Of course, you got your jumper cables, our air pump hose right here. And then they give you a couple different attachments, obviously the needle for your ball inflation, and then these two other ones for inflating different inflatables, such as an inner tube, something like that. Last thing you'll see here is you get three different quick start guides in three different languages. Of course, we've got English, Spanish, and German. After spending a few minutes going through this quick start guide, I gotta say they did a great job laying everything out step by step, showing you how to use this with both detailed instructions as well as pictures. Now I've jump started hundreds of cars in my lifetime, but if you're new to this, it can be a little intimidating. So I like the fact that they take you step by step, not only jumping your car, but also using the tire inflator, uh, the flashlight and more. Now the unit itself is going to be about nine inches long, just about two and a quarter inches thick and about five inches wide. Now, as we do a little walk around of the unit, you will notice you have this nice little carry handle right here on top, your LED flashlight display right there. Over here, you're going to have your inflation hose port as well as your jump cable port as well. And as we turn this thing up to the top, you're going to see your inputs and outputs with two USB A's, a DC, and your USB-C. As we take a little closer look at the face of this unit, you will notice that you have six different control buttons right here, starting here with our tire inflation. Then we have our jump start override button, our power button, measure and units button, plus a plus and a minus. Now, if we tap our power button once, you're gonna see this nice 3.3 inch LCD display. And it's showing us right now that we have 87% close to a full battery. So before we go ahead and field test this bad boy today, let's go ahead and get it charged up to 100%. Now basically to charge this thing, we're going to be using our USB-C input output port right here. And we got two different choices of cords that we can use. So both of these have a USB-C on one side. It's just the other side's going to have USB-A and this one's going to have USB-C. They do not provide you with a wall outlet, so you're gonna have to have one of those yourself. We're gonna go ahead and use the USB-C to USB-C adapter here today. So I'll just go ahead and get that plugged in. And once we do that, you're gonna see your display comes on and it shows us that it is charging. Now they do say that this takes just an hour and a half to get it charged from zero to 100%. I don't know how accurate that is, but it shouldn't take too long to get this thing from 87 up to 100. We'll see. So we got her all charged up to 100%. It's time to pull this bad boy off the charger and test it out. Now our Yeber Auto Unit really is a quadruple threat, giving us the ability to use this thing as a charge station, jump starter box, tire inflator, and flashlight. The first thing we're gonna go ahead and dive into is the 26,800 mAh power bank that has four different ports and will allow you to charge multiple things at one time. Now, how we're gonna field that, test this today is by charging up an iPad, my Garmin Instinct watch, a little light right here, and basically that'll be three things at once plugged into this. So let's go ahead and get it set up. So we've got all four of our ports being occupied right now, starting right here with our USB-A 12 watt output port, and that's going ahead and charging up our little Ulanzi utility light. Then we've got our USB-A 18 watt output port. That's charging up my Garmin Instinct. 
Then right here, we went ahead and plugged in our DC adapter. Nothing to plug into that right now, but that is 160 watt max output. And then on top, plugging in my iPad right here, we've got our USB-C in and out with a 65 watt max output. Now, as we take a look at the front of the unit, if you hit and go ahead and tap the power button, it will show you where your battery life is at. And then it also tells you right now that you have outgoing power as we charge these three units. All right, the next thing we're gonna go ahead and check out is our flashlight option. Now, basically to power on our flashlight right up here, all we're gonna do is a long hold on the power button. So we go ahead and hold that down. And once we do that, you'll see that our flashlight pops up. Now we do have four different modes with this flashlight and to change those, we're simply gonna hit the power button again. This first mode is just flashlight and we tap that again. It's gonna to go to strobe, tap it again. Now we've got strobe red and then one more time, it goes to the SOS. We tap it one more time and the flashlight will go ahead and shut off. So having yourself an emergency flashlight as well as charge bank is nice and everything, but now it's time to get down to business and see what this really can do. Lucky for us, we got ourselves a couple of classics here today, baby. Some old Dodge Grand Caravans that both have dead batteries and one has a low tire. Now you might be asking yourself, world's greatest dad, how did you get yourself such a nice collection of classic Dodge Grand Caravans? That's a story for another video, but for now, let's air up this tire. Now this is a 160 PSI air compressor with smart presets, pressure detection, and auto shutoff. Now to turn it on, we simply hit the power button, then we'll long hold it down the tire inflation button. And at this point, we're going to move over to these three buttons here to manipulate the screen. Now the measurement unit buttons here, if we long hold that for three seconds, it's going to rotate between our different units of measurement. We started at KPA, we went to bar, and now we are at PSI, which is where I want to be. Now the next thing you'll notice is at the top here, they have these different pictures for different presets. If we short hold the measurement and units button, you'll see that it'll select a car, preset at 36, a motorcycle, preset at 36, a bicycle, preset at 45, and a sports ball, preset at eight. Hit that one more time, it brings them all up and we can manually adjust using the plus or minus button right here. Now for us today, we're gonna to inflate this car tire. So we're gonna go ahead and pre-use the car setting to 36 PSI. And I'm gonna go ahead and time and see how long it takes us to do that as well up here. To turn on the unit, we're simply gonna short press this button. It'll turn on, I'll start the timer and we'll see how long it takes. And it took us just under three and a half minutes right there. And as you can see, auto shut off once it hit 36 PSI. And since we're spending a little time field testing this bad boy today, let's go ahead and inflate this flat football while we're at it. Simply going to use the needle that they provided us right here. We'll lock that in, insert it into our ball and go about this the same way we did before. Power button once, tire inflation button for three seconds going to choose the sports ball option and hit the inflation button one more time. There you go, eight PSI, good to go. So now it's time to jump some batteries, baby. We're gonna start right here with this nice 2005 Dodge Grand Caravan. Let's go ahead and try to turn it over, see if it'll start. As you can see, we got a little juice but nothing given. Now to get this thing set up to jump, all we're simply gonna do is insert our jumper cables right here. And at this point, we're going to connect our red positive to our positive terminal and our black negative to our negative terminal. Now, after we've connected them, we're gonna hit the power button and two things are gonna happen. Number one, some icons are gonna show up on the screen, which means we're good to go and jump this thing. Or number two, nothing is gonna show up, meaning that we need to use the force start button right here. Now this battery isn't too dead, so I'm assuming it should start without using the force start. But let's go ahead and hit the power button and see what happens. Yep, I think we're going to be good to go. It says ready, let's jump in the car, try to fire this up. Woo! 
Back in action, baby. Let's move on to the next one. Go ahead and test this thing out, make sure it's actually dead. And as you can see with this one, we got absolutely nothing. Once again, positive to positive, negative to negative. Let's see if this one will start on its own, just using the unit, or if we will need to use that four start button as well. Power button's on. And it says ready. So let's go ahead and try it without the force start. Two for two, baby. Now after doing everything we did today, let's go ahead and hit the power button, see how much juice we got left. As you can see, 40%, which I don't think is too bad considering we inflated a tire and a football, jump started two rigs, charged a couple things, and tested out the flashlight as well. Now a couple other things you should know about this unit. Number one, the standby time, meaning how long can you leave it in your car and it's still gonna get the job done if you get in an emergency. The company says you can go up to 24 months on a full charge and be good to go. Me personally, I would probably check it every 10 to 12 months just to make sure. The second thing you should know is that Yeber Auto does offer a two-year warranty with this thing. So if you have any issues, get a hold of them and they're gonna take care of you. So there you go. That's pretty much everything you need to know about the Yeber Auto 4-in-1 charge bank. Now, after fully testing this thing out, Here's my three takeaways. Number one, I appreciate the fact that this thing worked just how they said it was today and we had no issues with our field test. And number two, I like that they have a two year warranty. So if I do have any problems, they're gonna take care of me. And number three, I love that it comes with all these extra accessories and this nice travel case as well. So I can put everything in one spot, let it bang around my car and forget about it until I actually need it. It's for those reasons and more, I'm easily giving this thing a world's greatest dad thumbs up. And I say, go out and get you one. Hey, one more thing before you go. I want to let you know that the company behind this Yeber Auto 4-in-1 Charge Bank is a big fan of the world's greatest ads in-depth and informational videos. Therefore, about a month ago, they reached out to me and asked me if they could send me this product for video review purposes. Now, with that being said, all the thoughts and opinions expressed in this video were my own, and I always do my best to accurately describe any product I review. Now, I hope this video helped you out. We'll see you next time.